Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining in for today's talk. And our prayer is today that this talk will encourage you and that God will speak to you through it. And I do wanna say, you gotta to subscribe to this YouTube channel right now if you wanna see more stuff like this, all the latest content coming out. And also, don't forget, check out our website, myhopecity.cc and connect with us on Facebook by liking our page, Hope City Epton, and joining our Facebook groups. Again, thank you so much for joining us and I can't wait to see how God is gonna to speak to you through this talk. Hey Hope City, welcome to Church Online. So glad to be joining with you today. We are one church in many rooms and I'm excited that you've joined us today. Hey, especially if, you're this, if this is your first time, if you're a first time uh, visitor coming to Hope City Online, welcome to you. We're so glad that you are here. We'd love to just connect with you, chat with us in the chat line uh, today. We just, we wanna connect with you and again, welcome you. We're in the middle of a series um, called The Abundant Life. And our prayer through this series is that you, church, would know and experience the abundant life and that you'd be able to live out the abundant life. And so we want to continue in that uh, thought today and, and just continue on in the message Pastor Shane shared last weekend. And so we're just excited for what God is doing in our lives, in our lives of the local church and in this series. And as we come out of this series, our prayer and our hope is, is that you experience more of the abundant life. Let me pray with you. Father, we thank you for this time today. Thank you for this word that you've put in our heart. And God, I pray that you would now just, Lord, speak to each of us, wherever we're joining from, God, that you would just, Lord, allow us to hear your voice today over the next few moments. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our theme verse uh, for this series has been John 10.10. 10. You can't really talk about the abundant life and not go to John 10.10. 10. It says this, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. And so that is a powerful verse. And sometimes we kind of skip right over to the end of it. I know my tendency is to gravitate to the latter part of that verse. And of course, that's what we're talking about, the abundant life. We want you to live the abundant life. And I want you to believe today that God wants you to live the abundant life. I think a lot of us have the problem um, with believing that the abundant life is something that we can experience. But as I read this verse in John 10:10, 10, 10, the first thing that I notice is not the part about the abundant life. The first thing I notice is that I have an enemy. When I read the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, I see that I have an enemy. And I think it's good to be reminded today that you have an adversary who's working against you, who's coming against you, bringing attacks against you, doing everything he can to keep you from experiencing that abundant life that Jesus promised, that Jesus came to give you. You have somebody, uh, we, we call him Satan, um, many different names in the Bible, the enemy, the devil, whatever you want to call him. But in this verse, he's called a thief. And what does a thief do? He steals, he robs, he takes from you what God has given you. In this case, when we're talking about spiritual things and the abundant life, the enemy wants to take from you. He wants to steal from you. He wants to rob from you. And it's always good to know what your enemy is up to. Satan wants to rob from you the abundant life that Jesus has promised you. And I wonder today how many are sitting here thinking, as I start this message, that the abundant life seems impossible. It seems that I can't get it. I can't attain it. That'll never be me. That's what I want to come at today and talk about as we get through this talk, is that it is for you, and we have to stop the enemy from stealing from us. And you say, well, what do you mean stop him? We don't stop a thief. He just takes. He, just, he doesn't ask permission. But when it comes to what God has promised you, and the enemy stealing from you, he doesn't actually have power over you. We give him the authority in our lives when we believe his lies. Now, Satan is clever. He's not um, a fool. He's been at this a long time, and he's tricked a lot of people. And he doesn't come at us with, with a pitchfork and horns, but he's clever. In fact, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen that Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. He disguises himself. 
And that's how he gains access. That's how he gets in and steals and robs and kills and destroys. He wants to bring nothing but destruction to your life. But he's not obvious about it. If he was, we would, we would pick it out right away and we would say, no, this, this is not right. This is, this is the enemy's attack. But he disguises himself as an angel of light. He masquerades. He pretends to be something that he's not. And he offers you something that just isn't true. Satan often comes and promises us certain things and never delivers on it. He will promise you the palace, but he'll end up giving you the prison. He will promise you joy, but leave you in sadness and in mourning. He, he will promise you peace, but you will be left with unrest. He'll promise you green pastures and, and the good life, but the good life is not really his to give. That is reserved for God to give. And it is yours today, and it is available today to the believer who is in Christ, that abundant life is available. Our series title is The Abundant Life, but if I was to give this talk uh, its own title or a subtitle, it would simply be the word freedom. I want you to know and experience the freedom that Christ gives. You say, well, wait a minute, Pastor Dale, Aren't we free when we come to faith in Christ? Doesn't he free us? Yes, we are free from the penalty of sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We are free from the penalty of sin, which is death. But there are many believers today who have given their life to Jesus, yet they're still not living fully free as Christ wants them to. They've not fully accepted the freedom of God. They're still living in some form of bondage and they're living in some sort of stronghold, as the Bible calls them, that Satan has set up in their life, that Satan is working on and and developing in their life by believing lies. A stronghold is developed when we believe lies. Many Christians walk around in some form of bondage, not fully free, still caught up or hung up on something from their past, some hurt, some substance, some thing that they can't shake and can't be free of. And you will, you will never fully step into the abundant life until you are free, until you are fully free and experiencing the freedom that Christ wants you to have. And we want to talk about today tearing down the strongholds that Satan erects and constructs in our lives. Because Jesus came to give us freedom. I read in the book of Luke chapter 4 verses 18 to 21. It says, it tells us why Jesus came. It says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom. That word freedom is important for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. That's why Jesus came. If you're feeling oppressed today, if you're feeling like you're in bondage of some sort of another, one kind or another, Jesus came so that you could have freedom. Now, I I, I added verses um, verses 19 to 21 just because I think they're so powerful. He said, I've come to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then it says in 20, verse 20, he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus steps into the synagogue here, into into the church, let's call it. And he pulls out the scroll and he goes to Isaiah 61 and he's reading a prophecy about the coming Messiah about how the Messiah is coming to set the captives free and to give us full freedom and to proclaim liberty to those who are oppressed. And then he rolls up the scroll and he sits down and he says, this prophecy has just been fulfilled. I am the one who has come to bring you liberty. I am the one who fulfills the prophecy that Isaiah spoke about so many hundreds and thousands of years earlier. Jesus said, I'm that guy. I'm the Messiah. I have come to give you freedom. I have come to tear down the works of the enemy. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 says, But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil, who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. 
That is good news today. If you're feeling oppressed of any kind, if you're feeling down about anything, if you're feeling like you are in some form of bondage of one kind or another, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Now, I think it would be a good spot to interrupt myself and just kind of tell you what do I mean when I talk about the abundant life. Before we kind of get into these strongholds, I want to talk about those in a moment. But what does it mean, this abundant life? What am I talking about? Because if we're not careful, in North America, we can really um, North Americanize, if that's a word, we can, we can North Americanize this abundant life. We can think it's all about our easy life here, all about material things, all about things that we can touch and feel and, and you know, bigger bank accounts and bigger houses and bigger cars. Listen to me, church, that the abundant life that Christ is talking about isn't just a financial abundance. It can be that for sure. God can bless you in abundance with, with possessions and things. But listen to me, if God blesses you in that way, there is a responsibility with that blessing to be generous and bless others. But the abundant life that I'm really talking about, that I want you to experience, that Jesus promised for you, is not just about material things. It's this full life. It's having an abundance of joy when no one else has joy around you. It's having peace when everything else is in turmoil. It's about being able to lay your head on your pillow at night and know that all is well with your soul, even when things are not well all around you. It's, it's having an abundance of faith. It's an abundance of a relationship with Jesus. It's having an intimate, deep relationship with him. It's having uh, an abundance of prayer life and, and an abundance of knowledge in God's word. There's, there's so much here that God wants to give you and have you walk in and experience and, and have joy and peace and freedom. All of that is yours. All of that is available. All of that is available to the church. And it's sad and it saddens me to think that Christians walk around without the abundant life because of strongholds that are set up in their mind. A person who is held captive by a stronghold is a prisoner that is locked up by deception. What does that mean? A stronghold is something that is not actually true. We give it power over us, but it doesn't actually have power over us. God is the ultimate power in our life. And nothing is too hard for our God. And so when we have a stronghold operating in our life, when we have a stronghold set up in our mind, in our heart, in our life, we are allowing that thing to have power over us when it doesn't actually have power over us because God has the ultimate say. So any believer, anyone that is in Christ, What you're saying when you allow a stronghold to operate in your life is that you do not believe that God is bigger than that stronghold, that God can conquer it, that God can tear it down. Beth Moore has this quote. She says, anything that exalts itself in our minds, pretending to be bigger or more powerful than God is a stronghold. What thought do you have? What belief What lie have you believed in your mind that is pretending to be more powerful than God? What is that thing that is holding you back, that you are bound with? Maybe it's an addiction, some form of substance abuse, and it's got you bound and you're a prisoner to it. It's a stronghold in your life, and you're allowing that thing to be more powerful in your life than God. What thought, what what hurt? What thing have you allowed to set up in your mind that is pretending to be more powerful than God? Because it's not more powerful than God. There is nothing more powerful than your God. And so that thing that you are still being controlled by, you're allowing that thing, and it's pretending to be more powerful than your God. So we want to tear the strongholds down, the work of the enemy in our lives. If John 10.10 10 is kind of the theme verse for this series, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 5, would sort of be my theme verse for this message, this talk today in the series. It says this, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. The weapons that we have in our arsenal, in our tool chest, 
are divine weapons of divine power. We don't wrestle and fight the way humans fight. We are of the world. We are humans. We are in the world, the Bible says. But we do not wage war the way the world wages war. We have divine, powerful weapons to demolish the strongholds. What this means is we recognize that the person or the thing that we're fighting against is not really what we're fighting against. You know, you, you think your problem was with this person or that person or your employer, your job or, or some substance. That's the byproduct of the stronghold that Satan has constructed in your life. And so we don't wrestle against that person or thing. We are going to attack the stronghold and tear it down with, with spiritual weapons. Verse 5 says, we demolish arguments and every pretension or everything, every pretend thing that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Anything that is going against the knowledge of God, that God is all-powerful, that God is supreme, that God has the ultimate say in your life, anything that is coming against that, we are going to tear that thought down. How do we do it? We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now, I'm, I, that's a work in progress in my life. I'm working at taking captive every thought, but that's how we tear down, demolish. That's how we, we get our thought life in control. The weapons we have are our spiritual weapons, prayer, God's word, the Holy Spirit working in us. These are the tools that we use to tear down the works of the enemy, to tear down the strongholds that he has placed in in our lives the enemy satan is a liar and so we need to combat his lies with the truth of god's word we need to be in constant fellowship through prayer we need to have and recognize the power of the holy spirit operating in us so that we can tear down the strongholds that the enemy has erected and constructed in our lives a stronghold is a military term that would um, kind of define a, a position that is hard to attack, hard to defend against. And if so, if you were if you were in war or in battle, and you could get kind of in a high place or get in a rock, uh, um, kind of in a cave somewhere, that would be considered a stronghold because it would be hard for the enemy to penetrate it, to attack you, to get at you. And the enemy wants you to think that these strongholds are not breachable that these strongholds are unattackable, that you cannot tear them down. And in your own might, in your own strength, you will fail. But it's because we have access to God through Jesus Christ that we can tear down the strongholds of the enemy. So I want to be able to identify. I know I do. I want to identify when am I allowing a stronghold to be developed, to take root? When do I know I have a stronghold? What, what goes on in my life? What are maybe some symptoms that happen when there's a stronghold because I want to have freedom and I want to have the abundant life, but I need to deal with what the enemy is doing and, and how he's attacking me and any strongholds that might be set up in my mind. Well, first of all, strongholds confuse. If you have a stronghold operating in your life, you will, you will find confusion. You will, you will be confused. You will be looking at your current reality versus your expected promised life and, and things won't match up. Remember that Satan, our enemy, is the liar. He is the father of lies, and he spreads confusion. In our, in our verse, 2 Corinthians 3, 5, we read it in the NIV translation. But in the King James Version, it uses a different word. Instead of pretension, it used the word imaginations. Now, when you go back to the original Greek language and you look up that word imaginations, what it literally means, or best translated means, is confused thoughts. Satan wants to confuse your thoughts. He wants to pump you full of lies, get you believing things that aren't true about yourself, and have you all mixed up and confused. And we are here to tear down the confused thoughts. We are here, we are going to take captive every thought. A stronghold will frustrate you. Ever been frustrated before? I know lots of times I get frustrated. Probably most of the time I get frustrated with small things things that don't really matter, the bigger things I maybe kind of realize that this is God's territory. It's the little things that I try to do myself that I end up getting frustrated with, like everyone putting something together and you end up with extra pieces and extra parts and it's not making sense. Frustration, right? Frustration sets in. 
Maybe you're doing some job. Maybe on your job you can't get a project done or something. And frustration sets in. Let me ask you this. Does the frustration help you get the job done faster? Does the frustration help you move forward in what you're trying to accomplish? Most of the time, it doesn't. Well, what the enemy wants to do with a stronghold is frustrate your spiritual growth, frustrate your purpose, frustrate you and keep you from fulfilling the plans that God has in store for you, the plans that God wants for you. Frustrations come from problems or perceived problems. We get frustrated maybe in the church with some something or someone said this or, or has done that and we get frustrated and, and problems arise. Problems from work, problems from home. I was given this great advice one time. I was told, never give a problem more time than it deserves. Never give a problem more time than it deserves. If we spend our time dwelling on problems more than we should, I'm not saying ignore problems. I'm not saying just pretend like things don't happen and just you know live in this kind of utopia. No, that's not what I'm saying. But when we dwell on the problem longer than we should, and we fail to leave it with God, that problem can become a stronghold in our life. Psalm 62, verse 5 tells us this, that we need to wait calmly for God alone, my soul, because my hope comes from Him. Somebody needs to hear this today. You need to just take a moment. You're frustrated. You're confused. Things aren't going the way you thought they were. You thought they should you're not in the point of in life where you thought you would be at this at this stage things just aren't happening the way you envisioned them wait calmly on God tell your soul to wait calmly on God because that's where your hope comes from don't let the enemy frustrate you don't let the enemy entrap you in a stronghold because of frustration wait calmly for God. And the, and the big one, of course, back to our, our John 10, 10 verse, is strongholds steal. Strongholds will steal from you. I wonder today if, if, if we had time to talk to each of you that are joining us online and you know that there's a stronghold operating in your life, what could you tell me that has been stolen? What, what has been taken from your life because of a stronghold? What has Satan robbed from you? What joy have you lost because of a stronghold? What peace have you forfeited because of a stronghold in your life? You've gotten angry. Maybe, maybe anger is your issue and you've blown up too many times. Maybe, maybe your relationship has been severed. What have you lost in your life because of a stronghold? I wonder if we could speak to that person who is, is the addict today. Maybe alcohol or drugs are your vice and, and you just can't seem to kick it. This, this stronghold has got you in its grips. What has that cost you? What has that, what has that taken from you, from your family? I know people whose lives are, are torn apart by addiction. Marriages fall apart. What has been stolen from you? The enemy, remember, is a thief. He is a liar. He wants to take from you. He wants to destroy and if he can't destroy you physically, if he can't bring physical death to you, he will bring death to your family, death to your relationships, death to your emotions, death to your mental state, all of these things, if he can get you in a stronghold. Most strongholds come from a hurt. A lot of strongholds, are, uh, they begin as a hurt or an offense. What, what offense, what hurt have you allowed to grow into bitterness? into hatred and to become a stronghold in your life that you can't get past. You, you try and you can't. You do good for a little while and you fall back. Something triggers the memory. Something happens and all of a sudden you're right back in that place. It's because of a stronghold and you're not fully experiencing the freedom that Jesus Christ offers you. It is yours today. It is available to you today. You have to receive it. I wonder what sin in your life is a stronghold. I wonder, you know, in today's society with the technology that we have, pornography could be a stronghold to somebody. It's that instant access. It's at our fingertips every day. And you do good for a while, then all of a sudden you see something come up on your news feed and you're like right back in the same spot 
that you were. And you try to do good and you try to get past it and you try to do the right things. We need to tear down the strongholds. Here's what I want to do as I'm getting ready to kind of wrap up this talk today. We want to tear down the strongholds because they steal from us. They leave us confused and frustrated. We want to tear them down. We want to experience freedom so that we can have the abundant life. Here's what we have to do. We have to understand that the battleground is in our mind. The battle is fought. It's waged right here. It's won and lost right here. The battle happens here. This is where our enemy attacks us. It's not with this person. You think, you think that person's the problem. It's not. You think that this substance is the problem. It's not. You think that this organization is the problem. That's not it. That's a, that's a byproduct. The battle is in the mind. This is where Satan attacks with lies and deceptions. And if he can get you to believe something that is not true, he can create a stronghold in your mind that will bind you and hold you prisoner and keep you from living the abundant life. Pastor Craig Grishel says in his book, Winning the War in Your Mind, he asks this question, where are your thoughts taking you? Where are your thoughts taking you? Because you're always moving in the direction of your strongest thought. What, whatever you spend all your time thinking about, that's where you're headed. If you can't get your focus off of that person that did you wrong or hurt you in some way, and, and, and you, you spend all day obsessing about that and, and stewing about that, anger is growing and bitterness is growing. Where are you headed? You're heading to a stronghold of resentment. If you, if you can't get your mind off the, you know, you, you used to do this or serve in this area in the church and now someone else is doing it and, and you feel slighted or hurt or, or you're offended by it, where are you headed? You're heading to a place that takes you out of service, out of ministry, out of your calling, out of the fulfilling, uh, fulfilling God's purpose in your life. If you spend your time thinking about lustful things or immoral things or just things that aren't good for you, where are you headed? You're moving in the direction of your strongest thought. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As you think in your heart, so is he. That's, that's where you're headed. That's where you're going. We're going to take captive. Again, back to our verse. We're going to take captive every thought. We have to learn and train ourselves to take captive those thoughts, bring them under submission and under the authority of Jesus Christ. We have to know God's word. When those thoughts are penetrating our mind, when the war is raging, when the battle is on, we have to know truth. We have to know what God's word says about us, what God's word says about the circumstance, and we have to be able to battle that lie with truth and take captive every thought. Romans 8, 5, and 6 says this, Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. It's in your mind. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life. What is Paul saying? The battle is won and fought in your mind. If you're controlled by the Spirit, you're thinking about Good things. You're thinking about spiritual things. If you're controlled by your sinful nature, if you can't seem to kick that bad habit, you can't seem to break free from that, from that pattern, that cycle, what are you thinking about? The Bible says you're thinking about sinful things. Change your thoughts, change your life. I know that, that maybe sounds simple, sounds kind of like too good to be true, you know, the power of positive thinking, but it's true, you change your thoughts and you will change your life. Look at Romans 12, 2 says, Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. You want to become a new person? You want to transform into a new person? You want to kick the old life? You want to stop doing the same old, same old, day in, day out? You want to be free from the, those strongholds in your life? Be transformed, the Bible says, into a new person by changing the way you think. Some people would say, well, that's just, that's just you know, the power of positivity. That doesn't work. I'm not talking about you know, just by my will 
changing everything and pretending everything is positive and just thinking about positive things. Although I will say it's better to think about positive things all the time than negative things. It's not positive thinking I'm talking about. It's proper thinking. We need to have proper thinking. We need to be thinking about the things that the Word of God tells us to think about and focus on. We need to meditate daily on His Word. We need to stop going to the same sources that charge us up, that get us angry, that get these emotions uh, raging inside of us and triggering those thoughts. We need to stop going to those places. For me, I had to stop following certain things on social media because it was doing something inside of me that, that was not good. I would get angry. I would get upset. I was looking at certain things, reading certain articles, looking at certain posts, and I would have these feelings come up inside of me that I knew should not be there, and it was leading me into a direction that I didn't want to be in. And the great thing about technology is they have this on and off switch. Social media has this unfollow, follow option. Some of you today just, you need to change the way you think by stop going to the same sources that you keep going to that leave you frustrated, angry, upset, loss of joy, loss of peace. Change the way you think. This is what Philippians says in chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about these kind of things. That's a good list. If we could kind of master even a couple of those, we'd be heading in the right direction. But this is the list. This is the proper thinking. These are the things that we dwell on. Paul goes on to say, Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and look at this, and the God of peace will be with you. If you want to have peace, you want to have freedom, you need to think about good things. I know our world could use a lot more peace, and maybe you personally today could use peace. Maybe your heart is troubled. Think about the right things. As I'm getting ready to wrap up, I want you to experience abundant life more than me. Christ wants you to live your life to the fullest, not just when we get to heaven, but he wants you here and now to experience the abundant life. If you're not a believer today and, you're, and you're, you're joining us online, the abundant life for you begins with accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior. That is the first step. And for everyone who is joining today who is a believer and you're not walking in the fullness that Christ has for you and you're still bound by some things, we need to tear down those strongholds so that you can experience freedom. How do we do it? I think Jesus gave us the right answer in Luke chapter 11. It says, when a strong man, fully armed, guard, guards his castle, his property is safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overpowers him, he takes away his armor in which he was trusted and divides his plunder. Satan is a strong man. And he's guarding the strongholds that he has erected in your life. And he wants you to continue to live in bondage, keep you from fulfilling your purpose. He doesn't want you to have the abundant life. He's going to guard those strongholds with everything he can. And in myself, I am not powerful enough to tear them down. But when a stronger person comes, when a stronger one comes along, he can attack. And that stronger one is Jesus. Jesus Christ is the one who gives us the power to tear down every stronghold that, the, that Satan has constructed. And we can be free, fully free, not live in bondage, be fully free and experience the abundant life. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for this time in your word today. And I thank you, God, that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And I pray today, God, that you would go into every home, wherever people are joining us today. And Lord, set the captive free as you said you would do. Father, tear down strongholds, whatever it might be, Lord. doesn't matter what the stronghold is, an addiction, a thought pattern, a behavior, whatever it is, Lord, tear them down in Jesus' name. Set your people free 
And God, let us experience the abundant life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Hope City. I hope today's talk was encouraging to you. And hey, we would love to hear from you of how God spoke to you through this talk. And again, you can message us on Facebook. Make sure to like and follow us while you're there. Hope City F10. You can reach out on our website, myhopecity.cc. And don't forget, subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with all the content coming out. And we are excited to see how God is going to continually move through your life through this. Love you guys. Have a great day.